We're on the record for the video deposition of Roger Stone taking the matter of claiming versus Stone. Today is February 12th, 2020, and the time is 9.42 a.m. This deposition is being conducted at 110 Southeast 6th Street, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The court reporter is Trish Bailey Enton, and the videographer is Leland Olson, both of Empire Legal Reporting. Will counsel please introduce themselves, after which the court reporter will swear on the witness. Larry Clayman for the plaintiffs. I just want to put on the record uh, our amended notice of deposition, which lists six cases upon which this deposition is being taken. Clayman versus Stone, which is 19-011394, Broward County. Clayman versus Stone et al. 19-00272, Broward County. Corsi versus Stone, 50-2019, civil action number 013711, Palm Beach County. Clayman versus Santilli, 50-2019015104, Palm Beach County. Corsi versus Stone, that is 19CV324, U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia. And Corsi versus Caputo, which is 1-19-CV1573, District Court for the District of Columbia. So the deposition is being taken with regard to all of those cases. Uh, discovery has been consolidated. Uh, I'll ask that the court reporter mark as Exhibit 1 the amended notice of deposition. And then ask the court reporter to swear the witness in. Sure. Does everybody else want to just announce for the record? Robert Bouchelle on behalf of Roger Stone. Mark Lerner, Dwayne Morris on behalf of Newsmax Media, Inc., Christopher Ruddy, John Cardillo, and John Bachman in the uh, Corsi versus Stone matter in Palm Beach. Grant Smith, Roger Stone. Okay, I'm going to place you under oath. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear from the testimony you shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I'll show you exhibit one, Mr. Stone. That's an amended notice of deposition. You've seen that before, have you not? I don't recall. Uh, you are aware, however, that this deposition was to begin at 9 a.m. this morning? That is correct. And you are aware that this notice of deposition was filed in the court file and sent to your counsel on at least two occasions, correct? Yes. Uh, yet you showed up 40 minutes late. That's correct. Is My it understanding not? is that yeah. there was a problem with uh, notice on location. Uh, there's no problem. Look at the... Uh, uh, you, you want to get, get started? Let's get started. No, I'm, I'm not questions. getting started. I want this on the record. 110 okay. you, South you East 6th Street, let me finish. Suite 7, 1700, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301, correct? As I explained to you off the record, you noticed this at my office, and then without any uh, highlight that you changed the address without consulting a phone call or saying, I changed the address, please note the change of address. Had you done that, had you done that at 9.15, we would have gotten started, but we had to get in a car and come here instead of stay in my office building. In fact, this meta notice of deposition was filed, for the record, in the court file, and you get electronic transmissions, do you not, Mr. Pichel? I'm not discussing it. I'm not right. the witness, but that's fact, the explanation. And in fact, yesterday I sent a copy to you by email again, did I not? Seems extraordinarily petty to me. Can well, we get started? It's not petty, Mr. Stone. You your, have, your time's not more valuable than mine. Can you have, just go ahead? You have little to no respect for court or judicial process, do you? Objection. Uh, we're not answering that question. So let's get started with the facts of the lawsuit of this case. Has, has your counsel advised you on our, our, what it means to be under oath? Objection. That's attorney-client privilege. He's under oath. Let's begin the deposition. Mr. Stone, you've been convicted of per perjury on five counts, have you not? Objection. We're not talking about the criminal, any criminal aspect of, of uh, any criminal case. So you're aware that uh, it's uh, a crime to not testify truthfully or to withhold facts? That you can answer. Yes. Okay. When were you born? August 27th, 1952. And uh, run us through briefly your educational background. Uh, I went to John Jay High School, or I went to the Lewisboro Elementary School in Lewisboro, New York. I went to John Jay High School in Katona, New York. 
Uh, I did uh, about a year and a half at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And when did you graduate at George I take it you just did a year at George Washington, correct? A little bit more. What did you I do did, after that? I went to work for the committee to re-elect the President of the United States. That was President Richard Nixon? Correct. And how long did you work there? Well, I joined in 71 through Election Day 72. And what happened after Election Day 72? What did you do at that time? I worked for the inaugural committee of the, uh, of the, for the President. Okay. And how long did you work for them? Well, through the inauguration, which is in January. And what happened? 73. What happened after January 73 in terms of your employment? I believe I went to the Office of Economic uh, Opportunity, uh, but I'm, I'm not certain. And how long have you been, did you work there? Very briefly. I went there essentially to work on a project. So what happened after then? I was of out of work after that. And how long were you out of work? Um, well, let's see. I, I'm uncertain. When was the next time you were gainfully employed? Uh, probably when I went to work for Senator Bob Dole in 1973, late 73. And what was your position? So I was a research assistant to the senator. And how long did you remain a research assistant to Senator Bob Dole? Uh, through about the middle of 1974, as I recall. What kind of research did you perform? Opposition Le research? Legislative research. And what happened after your tenure with Senator Dole? Uh, I went to work for uh, Mills Godwin, who was running for governor of uh, Virginia, specifically on the campaign of the Attorney General candidate uh, M. Patton Eccles uh, through Election Day 73. And what happened after that campaign? Um, I don't recall. Just run us through, make it quick, your, your employment history. or Well, as best as, I, as best as I can remember, uh, 73. Uh, from there, um, I go to the, uh, to the, well, 75, I go to the Reagan for President campaign as National Youth Director through the, through the Convention of 76. After that, I become a founder of the National Conservative Political Action Committee, uh, after which I go back to work for Governor Reagan again in the 1980 campaign. Uh, then I go back to the, uh, and then I uh, co-found public affairs firm, Black Man, Fort and Stone. Then I take a leave from I there. Have to give the dates. When did you found, co-found well, Black Man, uh, Fort Shortly Stone. after the 1980 election. Was that Black Man, Fort Stone and Kelly? Not at that point. Okay. Did it later become that? Yes, it did. And when did that happen? Don't recall. And what type of work did you do public as a partner? Public affairs work. Lobby? No, I had some lobby clients, but mostly not. And how long were you with Black Manafort and Stone well, I took before it became and Kelly? Um, I don't recall. And how long were you with the firm total, even when it became Kelly? I don't recall. What did you do after that? I worked on the president's re-election campaign in 1984. Which president? President Ronald Reagan. And what did you do for President Ronald Reagan? I was the Northeastern political director for uh, all the states uh, from Maine uh, down to, to uh, Delaware, and as well as Ohio. And uh, did you go back to Black Man of Fort Stone and Kelly after that? I believe I did. Okay. And how long were you there? Till about, um, this is a guess, I believe around 89. And what happened in 1989? Um, we sold the firm, uh, and I was obviously no longer, well, we sold the firm, after that, I lose track. I think I go to work for myself. Uh, did you remain in Washington, D.C.? I remained there until 9-11, uh, the attack of 9-11. After 9-11, what did you do? Moved to Florida. Is that where you live today? That is and correct. And you're a citizen of Florida? Correct. And what type of work have you done since you moved to Florida? I've done a combination of uh, public affairs work. Uh, I have uh, written uh, two blogs. Uh, I have uh, written five books. Uh, I have uh, served as a, a pundit, uh, but I've been self-employed. Pundit on Infowars? Yeah, among others. Uh, what others? Newsmax as well? I've certainly been on Newsmax, Fox Television, OAN, 
so on. Have you been paid by any of these media entities? Only by InfoWars. Okay. Uh, did there come a point in time when you met me, Larry Klayman? Yes, indeed. When was when, that? When you represented me. Did I not meet you earlier than that at the old Ebbett Grill with regard to Jack Kemp? I don't recall. Okay. At the time that uh, you met me, I had said I was interested in helping Jack Kemp? It's entirely possible, I just don't recall. And is it not true that you had me put on the Executive Finance Committee for Jack Kemp? Uh, objection to form. I, I just don't recall. It's certainly possible, Sit but I, I'm not sitting, certain. Sitting on that executive, you, you were a, a supporter. I was a supporter of Jack Kemp. And in fact, you actually differed with your partner, Lee Atwater, and, and others that, that you went that off and represented Kemp. That is correct. To, with regard to being nominated for president. That's correct. But I was, was I was, of course, a volunteer. What year was it? 1988. Okay. And at that time, sitting on the Executive Finance Committee was also Donald Trump, correct? For Jack Kemp? No, not that I recall. I believe he supported uh, the vice president. Okay. Uh, you uh, have been sued by me and by Dr. Corsi, correct? That's my understanding. Okay. And in the course of being sued, you were sent document requests, correct? That's correct. And what did you do after you received the request for production of documents? How did you look for those documents? I asked uh, my attorneys to conduct the search because they had just conducted a search regarding federal matters. What federal matters had they conducted a search? I think it's rather obvious, is it not? What is it? Put it on the record. Yeah, you have uh, two federal cases, the DNC versus the Russian Federation in the Southern District of New York. You have um, Cochram versus, I'm trying to remember the lead defendant, but, uh, and Roger Stone. Um, and then you have um, the federal uh, criminal matter. Uh, what access to information did you give your counsel? Oh, entirely. And what counsel actually conducted the search by name? Uh, Grant Smith, who was with us today. And Mr. Bushell as well? Mr. Bushell certainly would have reviewed the material. Did they have anyone assisting them in looking for documents that were responsive to plaintiff's document requests in the cases that you're here on today? I am uncertain. Uh, did you give them access to computers, files, what did you give them access to? Everything. And what is that? That would be computers, uh, iPad, uh, cell phone, text messages, phone records, everything. What uh, cell phone provider do you use? AT&T. Was it used at that time? Yes. That you did the search? How well, long well, is it? What, at what time? At the time that the search was conducted by your counsel. Yes. Okay. How long have you been using AT&T? A very long time. Which computers did you give them access to? Uh, my main computer at home, which is a, you know, not a PC, but a Mac. Do you have a laptop? I do, but I very rarely use it. And you didn't give them access to Yes, that? they had my laptop as well. Did you give them access to phone records? Uh, they had access to phone records through other searches. You're aware that the document production requested the production of phone records as well? Uh, there must not have been any phone records to produce if you didn't get any. Text messages? You're aware that it required yes, the production I of text messages? Yes, it certainly was. I believe that the text messages were provided. Emails? Yes, absolutely. Now, you were convicted of not providing information to Congress which had been requested. Correct? That is untrue. Uh, objection. And we're it's not true. That charge was withdrawn, but go ahead. And, and your lawyers actually sent letters to Congress on your behalf saying that you did not have documents when you did. Uh, objection. We're, I'm instructing the witness not to answer. We're not talking about any criminal matters. No, we're not talking about criminal matters. We're talking about a course of conduct. Okay. That's what we're talking about. All right. Okay. We want to make sure he's aware that he needs to produce everything. I, I'm well aware of that. You learned the hard way, right? Objection, not answer. I'm Just because you're delusional does not mean that I have to be badgered by you. Am I delusional that you were convicted of seven counts? I'm not, not going to answer that question. 
Now, your, your residence, where was your residence located when the FBI came in with... We're, we're not answering these uh, questions. So oh, You can certify these that are not being answered. Please do. Yes. What, what computers did the FBI take? All the same computers? Not, not, we're not Pardon answering me. these questions. This is relevant to document production. I'll, you're, I'll you're, tie it up. <clears throat> go ahead. You're going to wind up getting sanctioned, Mr. Bichelle. No, you're going to okay. wind up getting sanctioned, this, Mr. This, Mr. This, Mr. This, uh, this, this like you are in D.C. So let's go. Let's, let's not do that. Why not? Continue. Not going to be badgered by this. You're not badgered. <clears throat> oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Go ahead. Keep okay. Continue. Now, I want to find out what computers did you buy com after that FBI raided your house? Did you then buy new computers? I'm not answering that question. The FBI took all, all of your computers. That right? is correct. Okay. Did you have backup for what you had, had on your computers in your house before the FBI raided your house? Backup. I'm not sure I understand the question. Did you have? Did you back up what was on those computers? I other think, words, I other th documents, I, think my, I believe I believe my lawyers had copies of everything that was on the computers. Yes. You anticipated possibly being raided by the FBI, so you gave them back up. Uh, objection! Uh, objection! Do not answer that. He's not. We're not answering that. Certified. What does that have to do about your defamation? About you? I want to find out where the documents are. There are no documents other than those you've been given. Okay. So. Where did those documents come from as to what I've been given? The search conducted by my attorneys. It, it was totally within their purview to do the search? That's correct. You played no role? Correct. You didn't review what they did? I reviewed it after the fact. Do you know whether they removed documents that were to be produced? Uh, I don't think they would do that. It would be unethical. But you don't know one way or the other? Either do you. Well, we'll find out. That's Maybe. why I'm asking questions. Uh, this right. is, this just is just a waste of time. Ask your next question. Now, when did you purchase new computers? Well, excuse me, did, did the FBI take your cell phones too? Objection. We're not answering these questions about what the FBI this did or relevant. didn't do. This no, it's relevant. not. Very few documents have been produced. I want to find out what devices they may be on that were recalled for that he no longer has in his possession or does have in his possession. That's a legitimate question. Okay. Well, I disagree. I'm struggling. Also, my questions answer. about telling the truth are quite relevant in light of the history of this defense. You've got your own problems in that regard, don't you? Let's ask the next question. What computers did they take from your house? Objection. The, the FBI. I'm instructing him not to answer. We're not asking and having any discussions about criminal cases. It's not criminal. I want to know what computers were taken. It has nothing to do with criminal. What computers were taken? Answer the question, please. I've, I've instructed him not to. Ask your next question. Okay. Uh, what computers, if any, and cell phones, what were the make of the computers that were taken by the FBI? Same, same. I'm instructing him not to answer. What were the make of the phones that were taken by the FBI? Same. Instructing him not to answer. Now, the allegations of the complaints filed against you predate the raid of the FBI on your residence, correct? If you know. If you know. I, I'm not sure oh, that we'll, I know. We'll be going through that. Now, what computers and cell phones did you purchase, if any, after the FBI took everything out of your house? You've, you've a asked that five times already. I have not. Okay. Well, I'm instructing yeah, you not to answer. Yeah, perhaps your attention span is no greater than with regard to a notice of deposition. Mr. Bouchel. Okay. Next question. <laughs> I'm asking the question again. What computers and cell phones did you purchase after okay. your house was raided? I'm, I'm if instructing the witness not to answer. It's irrelevant. We did our document search. We provided the documents. Okay. You are aware that not producing documents in a civil case can give rise to criminal liability as it does in a criminal case. Uh, objection to form. This is, this is harassment. Just ask questions about your it's lawsuit. It's not harassment. I, I, I want to make sure what, that he understood the consequence of not producing documents. We, we've explained. We have produced the documents. That's it. 
let's get into the facts of the case. What do you want to know? I control the deposition and the court does, not you, Mr. Bouchelle. Already you've shown a disrespect for court process. <coughs> Do you keep, do you have an office now where you keep files? I do not. Okay. Do you keep files in wherever you're living? To the extent that I have files, yes. Where are you now living? I'm now living at... Well, we'll, we'll give you his address off the record. Do you keep paper files? No, not really. But you keep some? Well, yeah. You keep backup? A little bit. Okay. And, and what do you keep? Well, an enormous amount of uh, paperwork regarding this recent case. Uh, what case? The criminal case that I've just been through, that I'm not answering questions about. Well, I'm not answering questions about the criminal case. But I just answered your question. Do you have documents currently that concern Dr. Jerome Corsi? I do not. How do you know that? Because I know what I have. Did you give your, your uh, uh, physical documents to your counsel to review? Yes. Oh, it's actually the other way around. I think my counsel gave me the physical documents since they almost virtually all come from discovery. But you have some in your house, correct? Uh, some, yes. And you didn't give them those, did you? No objection. They gave them to me. Why would I give them to them? You, you write things down from time to time, do you not? Certainly. You keep notes? Once in a while. Did you give your counsel notes to review to see whether the notes would be relevant to any of the that, cases that you're here on today. That would be work product then, wouldn't it? And he wouldn't have to turn it over. No, that wouldn't be work product, Mr. Bouchel. Yes, yes. Well, there are no such there, notes. There, there are no such notes, so we can keep you, moving. On a, on a matter by matter basis, that could be claimed, but to, to have them reviewed, obviously they weren't reviewed for whether they were work product or anything uh, else. Objection. You're assuming facts, not in evidence. Well, I'm going to ask. So, just to make it clear, you didn't give them any of the physical documents in your house to review in response to the request for production Objection in this case. It would be unnecessary because the documents I have came from them. They would be therefore well aware of them. But you keep notes yourself, correct? Not, not, on, not on any of these matters. I mean, yeah, I make a grocery list. Who doesn't? You never write anything down? Of course I write things down, but not pertaining to anything we're here to discuss. You just, write, just not all that you important. You didn't write down that Larry is an asshole. I, did I write that down yeah. and, with my hand, with my fingers? Yeah. Not that I recall. No, okay. That just came to you. Well, truth is an absolute defense. We'll see. Yes, indeed, we will. And we'll see what the truth is. Yes, we, we will. will. from this binder. Give one to the court report. <clears throat> These are documents that were produced by Dr. Corsi and I in the course of this litigation. Uh, there are some tax returns at the end which we are going to move with consent to put under seal, Mr. Stone, so I would ask that you not disseminate them or use them in any way other than in this case under seal. But let's start with my sworn affidavit on top and I'll ask that that be marked. It, en it entails, and you can just mark it right in the book, sure. make it easy. That's Exhibit 2 of the Stone Deposition, and it entails 59 pages. You are aware, Mr. Stone, that I'm the founder of Judicial Watch? I am.
You've spoken to Tom Fitton, haven't you? I, one time in my entire life. I saw him backstage at a, a conference in at Doral maybe uh, a couple months ago, and we, we shook hands in passing. Beyond that, I've never spoken to the man. You've spoken to others at Judicial Watch, though, haven't you? No, actually, I haven't. Not you, that I recall. Y you may have, but you just don't recall. I don't recall ever speaking to anyone at, at Judicial Watch. I, or I couldn't name anybody else at Judicial Watch other than Fitton, who I've seen online. And you've sent emails to Fitton? No, I don't believe I have. You've sent I'm, text messages to Fitton? No, I don't believe I have. You've committed, you've communicated with him through intermediaries? I have not communicated with him at all. You know what intermediary means? I'm f familiar with the term. Now, there came a point in time when uh, I left Judicial Watch, correct? That's my understanding. Yeah. That was around September of 2003. Objection to form. Correct? If you know. Right. Now, I suggest that you don't make speaking objections if you know, okay? He knows. One no, way actually, or the other. I, actually, I don't know. Okay, there, there came a point in time before September 2003 that a mutual friend named Scott Reed contacted you concerning me. Objection right? is, uh, as to form. While that may be true, I, I don't recall. Who was Scott Reed? Scott Reed was a friend of mine. At the time, he was chief of staff to Jack Kemp at Housing and Urban Development, correct? Objection of form, assumes facts. Uh, I just, chronologically, I don't recall. I'm, I'm just moving it along here, okay? Otherwise, we'll be here even longer. Now, uh, Scott Reed had formerly been the number two at the Republican National Committee under then Chairman Haley Barber, correct? That sounds correct, but I, I'm unsure yeah. of the exact years. And. Scott Reed told you that I was interested in running for the U.S. Senate. That is correct. Right. And that at that time, uh, it was known publicly that the current senator, one of the current senators from Florida, Bob Graham, was going to retire. There'd be an open seat. Correct? Uh, objection to form? Not, I, don't, I don't really recall. You don't recall? I remember Bob that. I believe there was an open seat. I couldn't tell you what year it was. There came a point in time after Reed contacted you that you and I uh, met, correct? Yes. And where did we meet? Don't recall. We met in New York City, correct? Uh, objection. Don't form. recall. You had an apartment there close to the plaza. Objection to form. I did have one at one time, but I don't recall and, the specific meeting. And we had dinner, correct? Objection. Don't recall. During that meeting, uh, we discussed whether you would be my campaign manager on the Senate campaign that I had planned to undertake in Florida. Objection right? to form? I don't think I've ever been a campaign manager in the or last you, 30 years. You would, could, uh, you would play a role in it? Yes, I would, I would agree with that. Okay, and I told you that if I was to retain you to do that, you would have to be exclusive to me and not representing any other political or potential political candidate. I have, no form. I have no such memory. Okay. And I told you that if you were to work with me, you could not, you had to do things ethically. Objection of form. Correct? I have no such memory. You have no memory of anything dealing with ethics? Objection of form. That's argument. <clears throat> okay. Um, there came a point in time when we worked together in anticipation of my running for office in Florida, correct? That is correct. Okay, and what was your capacity? I believe I was working as a strategist. And you uh, were then on Miami Beach. You had your own office down there. That is correct. You still have that office? Do not. Okay. And you went out and you found office space, correct? At your direction, as I recall. It was on, on Alton Road? Right? That, that sounds right. On top of the cleaners. That sounds right. Okay. It had previously been a, a modeling agency that had occupied the space. Correct. I don't recall. Okay. And you then recruited people to work on the campaign, correct? Uh, at your direction, yes. People that you had known that were friends. People I knew, uh, I don't, friends, I don't mean 
people I thought were competent professionals. Who did you recruit? <sighs> Let's see. Michael Caputo. Uh, Teddy Siegel. I don't recall beyond that. Uh, there was somebody that was uh, a weightlifter that was allegedly <laughs> my security guard. Oh, Adam Powers. Adam Powers. And um, you also brought in a pollster, did you not? In anticipation of my declaring for the Senate in Florida in 2003. Normally that would be the first step in any campaign, so I don't recall and specifically. that was Tony Fabrizio, correct? Sounds right. I think he's the best in the business. And you lined up a polling agreement with him, correct? I don't recall. Wherein he charged me $50,000 for a $10,000 survey, <coughs> correct? Um, I don't know, that, don't know that that's true. You'd arrange for kickbacks from Fabrizio. Absolutely not. Form. Now, do you have some evidence of that? Well, the fact that it's five times what it would cost. You, you have no idea what a survey costs. Yeah. How would you know? Ask for Apparently, you do. I do know. Yeah. And a, a comprehensive statewide survey does not cost ten thousand okay. dollars. Right. So, in the course after we decided to work together, you put together a binder of materials about cases that I had been involved in and matters that I had been involved in as the head and founder of <coughs> Judicial Watch, correct? I have no such memory. In fact, you spent a lot of time make, putting those binders together, didn't you? Objection form. Is your memory that bad, Mr. Stone? Objection of form. It's, Argumentative. In all honesty, it wasn't all that important to me. I don't, I've been through quite a bit. No, I don't recall any of that. We had several meetings in anticipation of my declaring for the Senate, correct? Objection of form. Don't recall. Likely, but I don't recall. We met in your office, correct? I don't recall. You had a secretary then, or an assistant. What was her name? Yeah. Diane Thorne, perhaps? Where is she located today? Uh, I believe she's in uh, Miami somewhere. How is Thorne spelled? T-H-O-R-N-E. Okay. And she helped you put together those binders, did she not? I Thorne. don't recall. And in those binders you had a number of my successes at Judicial Watch, correct? I don't recall. Okay. You are aware uh, that when I was at Judicial Watch, I played a role in triggering the uh, China Gate scandal. Objection Remember the China Gate scandal? Objection. Well, I don't recall. Okay. You're aware that uh, I'm the only lawyer who ever got a court to rule that a president of the United States, Bill Clinton, had committed a crime. It was in a civil context. Objection. I, You're aware of that? No, actually, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, you are aware that I brought a case against the Commerce Department, then run by Ron Brown. Objection. Form. Okay. Uh, no, I wasn't. You wear your under oath, aren't you, Mister? Yes, Sam? I certainly you, am. You want to recreate what happened? Uh, this, this is this is that. The, the sorry comments. if I haven't remember. I'm sorry if I haven't memorized your bio, but it's just not that yeah, important these, to me. These these I don't know. I don't know the answer to the well, question. Well, apparently these comments these comments are argumentative and are not questions. So well, I I I can't stand uh, to sit uh, here it silent matter. It doesn't with, matter, with perjured right? testimony. It doesn't sorry. matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter, and I move to strike yeah, your comment. You're, you're aware that telling the truth is not only telling the truth, but not withholding the truth. The we've, truth facts, we've been right? through this. He's under oath. Ask a question about no, the aware cases. Of that? Ask the you're question about the cases. You aware of that? Ask a question about Are you the aware case? that it also entails not forgetting when you uh, or claiming to forget when you actually remember? Uh, I don't remember any of the things that you've just cited. Sorry. Do you remember that someone who worked on that campaign with me was a person named Sandy Kovas? Yes. Okay. Sandy was my chief of staff in Miami before she came to work on the campaign? Yes. At Judicial Watch? Yes. Nice lady. So she knows what went on, correct? 
objection what went form. on? With, what, with, what, what's the implication? With, with the binders and, and, and the background. Well, I research. have no idea what she knows. Okay. And you know that she had a daughter named uh, Lisette Tortora, T-O-R-T-O-R-A? I did not recall that. In fact, you decided to uh, work with me, represent me, as you put it, as a consultant, because you were impressed with the work that I had done at Judicial Watch. Well, I think the reason I wanted to work with you is because you, uh, you told me you had access to the Judicial Watch house file, and that would be necessary to finance a Senate campaign in a state this large and with this, these expensive uh, media markets. Otherwise, it would be fruitless to try to run for the Senate without money. So what you were interested in was money, making no, money? I, no, I was, in, I was interested in having the money to communicate your message. Okay. So uh, what I told you was is that uh, Richard Vigory had a copy of that list, correct? Uh, you told me you co-owned the list, as I recall, because that was a standard okay. in the industry. Well, regardless of that, you intended to make money off of doing consulting for me. You can do it for free. Objection. I was never paid anything, if that's what you're asking me. Now, in fact, uh, when our relationship ended, uh, the people that you brought in took computers I had purchased with my own money and cell phones, correct? Objection to form. I have no knowledge of that. And Michael Caputo was one of the people that misappropriated that. Objection to form. I have no idea. That property. I have no idea. You were aware that I later wrote a book, Autobiography Horrors, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment? I'm unaware of that. You've never seen that? No, I hadn't. Okay, you're aware that I wrote about our so-called relationship during, in that book? Objection for it. I don't recall. You weren't contacted by reporters who asked you about your role in my campaign? I honestly don't recall. Now, at the same time that you were uh, supposed to be representing me, you were actually also representing Al Sharpton, correct? That is incorrect. I've never represented Al Sharpton. Or you I know were, the gentleman. You were helping Al Sharpton, correct? I was indeed. What was he doing in 2003 politically? Dis disrupting the Democratic Party. Okay. How was he disrupting the Democratic Party? By running for Party? president on a radical platform. So you were telling me when you would leave Miami uh, to go up north that you were seeing your sick father, correct? I did see my sick father. Yeah, but he, you're, was, he was ill at that time. Notwithstanding that, whether that's true or not, you were also up there to consult with Al Sharpton. No, right? I never consulted with Al Sharpton. I'm certainly entitled to meet the gentleman, if I wish. And you, you were working with him to, as you put it, disrupt the Democratic Party. And that was my goal. And how was he going to disrupt it? By running on a radical platform, which drives the party to the left. You, know, you weren't honest with me, were you? That that you were going to be exclusive to working uh, with objections. me? Objections. Uh, I don't believe I had any other client at that time. Where are the binders that you put together with regard to my campaign today? Objection to form? I have no idea. In one of the meetings that we had, it was at your then home, correct, on, in North Miami? Don't recall. You did have a home in North Miami, correct? At one time, yes. Right. It was on the banks of the Biscayne Bay. No, I think it was on the canal. It was, that was on the it was on waterway. Yes, it was on a waterway. Okay, and you remember sitting there with me outside, do you not? I do not. Okay. You remember saying, gee, isn't this great, smoking a cigar, I feel like I'm Hyman Roth. Don't recall that at all. You have a, an admiration for the mafia. Uh, objection you know? of form. And do you have a year for this, by the way? Can you no, we have two days. No, no. Year. Yes, 2003. Don't recall that at all. Yeah. You know people who are in the mafia, do you? Objection of form. The consulting that you did for Donald Trump was in the gambling industry, correct? Uh, I represented his uh, ho Trump hotels and casino resorts, yes. It's well known that, that the mafia is present in the gambling uh, industry. Uh, objection of form. Uh, okay, fine. 
It, it assumes facts, not in evidence. There are allegations to that case, but I don't know anybody who would meet that, meet that description. The, uh, the, the Casino Control Commission in New Jersey has very, very rigorous regulation of the industry. So I would doubt that that's true in the New Jersey industry, which is the only market in which no. Donald Trump ever owned I'm not casinos. saying that, that uh, President Trump is mafia or has associations. I'm saying the gambling industry has a significant component of the mafia. I, I don't know uh, how he's qualified to even say that. So I've read that, but I don't know it to be true. I don't think it's true in New Jersey because of their rigorous uh, regulatory scheme. Now, Hyman Roth was the character that played Meyer Lansky in the movie The Godfather, correct? Yes. And you have an admiration for him. I've never said anything of the kind. And you have an admiration for Roy Cohn, too, C-O-H-N. Roy, Roy Cohn was a friend of mine, yes. The binders which you kept uh, had a number of my successes in it, uh, both, uh, both yeah. at Judicial Watch and in my private capacity as a lawyer. Did it not? Uh, objection. I have no. I have no, I have no recall. Uh, form. Go ahead. I have no recall of any such binders. Now you wouldn't have represented me if I was a loser, would you? Uh, I thought that you, um, if you had the money, could be a viable candidate for yeah. the Senate. A loser can't win as the, for the Senate in Florida. Correct. Not without money. A loser could win? No, no. A loser cannot win okay. unless they have money. What, what this losers? Is, this is uh, what define loser in your context. Someone your who, who loses cases repeatedly and who accomplishes little to nothing, in this case, in the legal profession. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. How did you do in the Senate race? We'll get to that. Yeah. Thanks to you. No, thanks to you. No, thanks to you. Where's that list, Larry? Now, what is it that, uh, other than money, caused you to represent me in the Senate race? We were friends at that time. Uh, you had just, as I recall, come out of uh, Judicial Watch. Uh, you uh, wanted to run for the Senate, and you had, you told me, access to uh, the necessary elements of raising a substantial amount of money uh, in the, one of the most expensive states in the country to run for a statewide office. Now, at the time that I declared, you had arranged for a tour of Florida on a private jet, correct? I don't recall. And we went to three different locations. I don't recall. We went to Tampa, Orlando, and Miami, correct? I don't recall. You were actually on the plane with me. Uh, objection of form. No, I don't believe that's Who true. Who was on the plane with me? I don't recall there even being a plane. Now, Michael Caputo was on that plane, wasn't he? Objection I don't, form. I have no idea. And you are aware that um, that at each location I gave a speech, correct? I don't even recall the tour, so I couldn't say. And you helped prepare that speech, did you not? I don't recall. You're aware that at the time the governor of Florida was Jeb Bush. It sounds correct, but I'm uncertain. You had sold your services to me in part by saying that you strongly dislike the Bushes, correct? Uh, that is definitely true. I've written a book on the subject. Okay. And, but you still urged me to call him when I ran, f when I declared for the Senate as a courtesy as the governor of Florida, correct? I think that would be the protocol. I don't recall that specifically, but normally speaking, that would be the protocol. Now, we parted ways, did we not? I believe we did. And what did you do after we parted ways? What, what did you do after that? Work for Sharpton? Never worked for Al Sharpton. Consulted with him? Never, consult, never consulted. No, I, I, he's a friend of mine. I gave him advice when he asked for it. 
Do you have friends that are basically race baiting vigilante extortionists? Uh, 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 objection. Don't. You consider those are, those your friends? I'm objection not. to form. Uh, I'm instructing the witness not to answer. I mean, for a defamation case, you just defamed Al Sharpton. Are there others? Oh, you can't defame Al Sharpton. I can't defame you either. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> we'll let a jury decide that. I doubt it. Do you have faith in the jury system? Uh, objection to form. This is not, these are not relevant questions. Ask your next relevant question, please. You are aware that uh, after I left, or after the Senate campaign, I started a group called Freedom Watch, correct? I, I don't know when you founded Freedom Watch. I do know you started such a group. And you're aware that while I was at Freedom Watch, and still am, uh, I obtained preliminary injunctions against the National Security Agency for illegal mass surveillance. Uh, objection to form. I was unaware of that. You read the, the media routinely, do you not? That's I do, but, that's I don't job. but I don't recall reading that. Now you have an interest in the mass surveillance that's been conducted on President Trump. I do. do you not, right? I do. And you're aware that it had been conducted on others before him by the NSA, FBI, CIA. Uh, I believe that to be true, but I don't recall um, reading about you in that context. And you believe that they've conducted mass surveillance on you, illegal mass surveillance, correct? Objection to form. The New York Times reported the, set that on January 20th, 2017, on page one. Now, notwithstanding your, quote, not remembering, unquote, if an individual is able to obtain a preliminary injunction against the NSA, um, the CIA, or the FBI with regard to mass surveillance. That's quite a legal achievement, is it not? Objection to form. In terms of ma it's mass surveillance? Answer if you'd like. I, I, in all honesty, I'm not an attorney, so I couldn't tell you what a preliminary injunction means. That is getting a court to order that the activity, the alleged illegal activity, cease. You're aware of that. Objection to form. You don't know that. Not do not know that. You're aware that I played a role uh, at Freedom Watch in having Obama's five million dollar excuse me, five million illegal alien amnesty executive order declared uh, void, Objection null and void. Form. Not familiar with that. That wasn't widely reported either? I can't tell you it was widely reported. I certainly didn't read it. You're aware that the injunctions that I did get against the NSA and the other intelligence agencies and FBI gave rise to the USA Freedom Act. Objection of form. Unfam Congress passed a new law. Objection Unfamiliar with that. Now, if in fact that was the case, that would be quite a legal achievement, wouldn't it? Objection and form. You're asking for a conclusion. I'm unaware of any of those things. Okay. You, you don't read the media at all? I do read the media, but um, you're not ubiquitous in the media. Okay, see, these are the documents that were requested, okay, as to what you know about me, mentioning yes. me, right? Yes. And Dr. Corsi. Yes. But now you've gone blank, correct? Objection and <laughs> form. It's just not that important to me. Sorry. You were important enough. I was important enough to you to make several remarks about me on InfoWars. Yes, Objection. indeed. Okay. Objection to form. You're aware that I'm a columnist on World Net Daily, correct? I am not. You've written articles for World Net Daily, haven't you? I'm uncertain. I don't think so. But I'm uncertain. You're aware that I have a radio show, Special Prosecutor, with Larry Klayman? I did not know that. No. 
Your role as a political consultant with Black Manafort and Stone was to help presidents get elected and then call in the chips with regard to lobbying money. Object, objection of form. Call in the chips? Well, profit from that. I'm saying some objection. Get someone elected president and then trade off of, <coughs> of your uh, that would be familiarity your, with that, that person. That would be your interpretation, not mine. You have called yourself a, a self-styled dirty trickster. No, actually I haven't, and I forced the Los Angeles Times to retract that. The self-described dirty trickster is not how I have described myself. I have commented that I've been called that, and therefore I'm probably stuck with it. But no, I have not proclaimed myself to be said. What was that documentary that was done about you by Netflix? What was that called? called Get Me Roger Stone. Get Me Roger Stone. It was Stone. a quote from uh, James A. Baker III. Now, during that documentary, you touted the fact that you are a master of, of political dirty tricks. I don't know that I specifically said that. What did you say? Don't recall. Film speaks for itself, right? You can go look at the film, I guess. Okay. In 1996, you were accused of, at the Republican Convention in San Diego, of attending a swingers party. You remember that? Objection of form. Relevance? Yeah. What's the relevance of that? That's uh, when I represented you with regard to get the media off your back, correct? I think that's correct. <coughs> you later advocated for me to become U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, did you not? I don't recall that, but I certainly may have. Now, you wouldn't advocate for somebody that's a loser to be U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Well, what yeah, year was that? What year was that? Okay. So you're saying I became a loser after that? All I'm saying is that I look at the totality of your uh, record, and I'm entitled to my opinion. But you're saying I've never won a case. You have, you have absolute knowledge that I've never won a case? Uh, Objection of form. <clears throat> That was the impression I had, yes. Okay. You, what uh, research did you do uh, to determine that I never won a case? don't need know that you need research to express an opinion. That was an opinion. No, that's a fact, isn't it? Either you win a case or you don't win a case. Um, if you say so. A statement like that can damage a lawyer in terms of his ability to obtain clients, his reputation, and his uh, goodwill, uh, correct? Objection of form. And you can respond. You do enough of that on your own. We were aware that that can be very damaging to a lawyer in terms of his reputation and goodwill, correct? Uh, would, since I'm not a lawyer, I, would, uh, I don't know that. No one's going to hire a lawyer that loses every case, um, correct? I wouldn't, that's for sure. You hired Mr. Bouchel, right? Yes, I had. Did he win? He's won a number of cases. This. Okay. He certainly won the case against the DNC, uh, and he won the Cockrum case, yes. And despite the fact that he lost your criminal prosecution, he's still your lawyer, correct? On this matter, he is, yes. And Mr. Smith? On this matter, yes. You were alleged with regard to that swingers party of wearing a toga, correct? Don't, re <laughs> don't, re don't recall. And posting pictures on the internet um, of yourself half naked? Objection of form. Half naked is defined as not wearing a shirt, I think. And you had told me at the time that that was your houseboy that posted that. That's what I believed at the time. You posted it, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall doing that, no. Mm
I'm going to turn your attention to page 10. Of Exhibit 2, paragraph 58. Of Exhibit. This one, yeah. Page 10. Yep. This is a appearance that was published by InfoWars on January 18, 2019. That's what's being referenced in paragraph 58, correct? Yes, okay. appears to be. Now, what is InfoWars? It's an uh, online, uh, conservative-oriented uh, news organization. And how did they disseminate, at, the, at that time, how did they disseminate uh, their broadcasts? Online. And it was on YouTube at the time? Uh, 19, yes, it would have been on YouTube. What was your relationship with InfoWars? on or about January 18, 2019? Uh, at that point, I was an occasional contributor. I had no business relationship with them. You're aware that InfoWars had many viewers at that time? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, they had millions of viewers, correct? I think that's probably true, yes. And they still do. Um, I couldn't tell you what their viewership is today. And many of those viewers are in the state of Florida, correct? I would think so, yes. Yes. And in their videos, they solicit uh, money, correct, to buy uh, products that InfoWars sells. They sell products, yes. Yeah. Now, the head of InfoWars at the time, in terms of the broadcast, was Alex Jones, correct? That is correct. Um, was he the sole owner of Info? Was he an owner of InfoWars at that time? I don't know what the ownership of InfoWars okay. is. He has a father, does he not? He does. Who's that? don't recall his name. He's an owner as well, correct? I don't know that. The broadcast which you uh, made on January 18, 2019, you referred to me, Larry Clayman, correct? That appears to be the case. Why did you refer to me during that broadcast? Um, I, I suspect because you did something I didn't like. What did I do that you didn't like? Don't recall. So you'll makes negative statements about somebody even if you don't know whether anyone did anything uh, I, I, that you I'm didn't entitled like. to an opinion. It's, um, you know, it's a free country. So it just came out of the blue. Don't recall what prompted it, to be honest with you. In fact, you thought somehow that I was going to be a threat to you some in, in, with regard to Special Counsel Robert Mueller's uh, so-called Russian collusion investigation. Uh, objection of form. We're I'm not going to answer that. We're not talking about okay. the criminals. You were concerned about my experience with you at the time that you were consulting on my Senate campaign in Florida, correct? Conjecture on your part. You were concerned that, that your staff had misappropriated computers and cell phones and the like, which I had purchased with my own money. Absolutely not, and I don't know that there's any proof of that. Now, you were, you were concerned that I didn't like you in some way, correct? Um, not particularly. That, that doesn't concern me one way or another. You were concerned that I was angry at you for the time period that you represented me, allegedly represented me because you were doing Sharpton. No, actually I was angry at you, but that's okay. Okay, why were you angry at me? Uh, because a number of uh, misstatements and falsehoods that you uh, told me regarding your ability to raise money. Okay, well money is all that's important to you, right? Money that's is important in terms of getting you elected to the Senate, And it's yes. important to fill your pockets. You right? never, uh, do you not work for money, Mr. Clinton? You never paid me a dime. Uh, you violated my trust, did you not? You violated my trust, Mr. Clinton. Okay. Now, you were also concerned that it had been reported that I was representing Dr. Jerome Corsi on January 18, 2019. Conjecture on your part, I don't recall. You feared Dr. Jerome Corsi, did you not? No, absolutely not. Uh, you made a number of derogatory and st statements about him as well during the course of the Russian collusion investigation. We're not answering questions about... All right, we'll get to the specifics. But you don't get to decide what he answers, okay, Mr. Bichon? But I do, so I'm not answering questions regarding that. Okay. Certify it. Please do. Now, at 125 of that broadcast, back up. 
You were concerned somehow that Dr. Corsi was going to collaborate with Special Counsel Robert Mueller and his staff against you, correct? Conjecture uh, on going, your part. Yeah, and also let's not get into I'm it. I'm not asking about my conjecture. I'm asking about you. We're not. We're not talking about anything you were related concerned, right? to. We're, we're not talking about anything related to that. Um, I told you that in court when we agreed to Intent have this Intent is an issue here, okay? So okay. You, you're well, not. I'm instructing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're going to wind up getting yourself sanctioned, Mr. Bichel. No, you're going to okay. get yourself sanctioned, Mr. Yeah. Clinton. All right. Okay. As you have Don't. been in D.C., as I recall. Ask your next question, please. Now. Dr. Jerome Corsi was um, material witness number one in your indictment by Special Counsel Robert Mueller. Correct? So they say we're not we're not talking about the, I'm laying any the foundation. Special Counsel. I'm laying the indictment. foundation. These 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 statements were made in the context of an ongoing criminal that you investigation and let me finish. All right. Sure. Criminal investigation and prosecution of the defendant, in this case, Stone, okay? And motive and intent is relevant in this case, particularly with regard to punitive damages or anything else. So I'm entitled to ask these questions. My, may, may I respond now? You can respond. Okay. The purpose of this deposition was to have it, all these cases consolidated, including discovery. You represented to me that uh, Newsmax would also be a part of it. That didn't work out. They're here, but they're not required to ask questions. You're 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 permitted to come back on a different day. This uh, we didn't get the benefit of the bargain, meaning sitting here having a full and complete deposition. Um, Mr. Stone still has issues regarding the criminal case, so we're not going to be answering questions today about anything relating to the special counsel's indictment or anything relating are to you that asking, case. Are you instructing him to take the Fifth Amendment? No, I'm not instructing him then to take the Fifth Amendment. Then he has to answer. Amendment. No, I'm instructing him not then, to answer. Then you're him. instructing the deposition. I am not. There are motions to dismiss pending as to Mr. Corsi, and um, this is the time you demanded to have this deposition. I try to accommodate. It didn't work out. We'll do in another day. You're, you're, you're the one we're doing it now. You're the one who suggested the consolidation, correct, to the, to the judge. To and and I just explained judge to you Singel. what happened. I just explained to you what happened. So um, let's ask. Well, there's actually questions. an order which consolidates the discovery, correct? Which is not really are, consolidated. Are, are you defying that order like you did the notice of deposition this uh, morning? I did not defy it. Coming any up order. with with nonsense as to why you didn't know where this was when you came in. 40 minutes late. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Clayman. Move on. Let's go. Now, you were concerned that Larry Clayman and Dr. Jerome Corsi were going to do something in collaboration with Robert Mueller that would affect you in the criminal investigation and prosecution by the special counsel, he, correct? He, I'm not answering, not answering any questions question. pertaining Certify to Certify it. Yes, do. And that's why you then uh, launched these statements about me uh, on InfoWars. Speculation on your part. And you're aware that I was Corsi's counsel. We're, we're not answering these questions. Certify it. At 125, you say, defendant Stone, you say, he, he's, meaning Clayman, never actually won a courtroom victory in his life. I believe, to be, that, I believe that to be true at the time, okay. yes. Now, you never did any research, did you, to find out whether that was true or not before you made that statement? That is correct? an impression that I had, yes. Okay. Uh, but in fact, you actually did know that I had had courtroom victories. No, actually I did. Or you wouldn't have wanted to be my so-called consultant in the Senate campaign. That was a long time before this. Okay. You then say at 1.30, Defendant Stone says he, meaning Clayman, was ousted at Judicial Watch. Ask Tom Fitton why he left. He was ousted because of a sexual harassment complaint. Yes, I'd heard that. Yeah, where did you hear that? Don't recall. You heard it from Fitton, didn't you? I most certainly did not. Okay, but you remember that, but, but you don't remember where you heard it. Uh, I don't remember where I heard but as I've told you previously, I've never spoken to Tom yeah. Fitton other than the one time in passing when we shook hands. And, and we certainly one, didn't discuss and this. And during that one time in passing, you discussed this, correct? We did not. Okay. 
So you just glean that out of uh, I, the cosmos? You, you know how politics work. People talk. Form. Particularly about something like that. Well, who talked? What 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 were the circumstances who that talked? you're leaving? How would you who get? How, why would you leave an organization that you founded? Who 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 talked? I don't recall. You don't recall? No, I don't. You're lying, aren't you, Mr. Stone? No, you're lying, aren't you, you're Mr. You're a convicted Clayton? liar, aren't you? Stop. Stop. And, and you're stop. about to be ousted from the bar. Stop. Let's take a break. Good time for a break. Have fun molesting your own children, Larry. Stop. I read the court decision. You read that? Huh? Yeah, I did. Did you read anything else? Fuck you. Going back to paragraph 58 and 137 of the InfoWars broadcast. Back up. InfoWars generally has a conservative audience, correct? Conservative and libertarian, I'd say. And you're aware that I am a conservative, correct? Uh, that's my understanding. At 137, uh, you stated on that broadcast, he, Clayman, is incompetent. He's a numbskull, he's an idiot, he's an egomaniac, and he could be the single worst lawyer in America. With him as Jerry Corsi's lawyer, Corsi may get the electric chair. So your idea that he's a good guy is entirely wrong. Right. Constitutionally uh, protected free speech. Well, we'll Opinion. Let, we'll let the jury determine that. Yes, I doubt it. Objection to form. Generally speaking, you need evidence to get your case that far. Okay. You have faith in, uh, in Objec judges? Objection to form. Not answer you have faith in Amy Byrne Jackson? Objection of, wait, what are you doing? Ask questions about the case. This He's is argumentative. The He's the one who's injecting you're, you're a lawyer. legal analysis into You're it. a lawyer. Stop being argumentative. Ask your next, ask a no, question. I'm asking the question. So you did know that I was Corsi's lawyer, correct? Um, yes, I guess I did. Now you remember. Well, I don't remember the context of this. In all honesty, you don't put anything ahead of it to indicate the, co the context. But based on that quote, yeah, I'd say so. Now, Jerry Corsi didn't get the electric chair in my representation, correct? Objection to form. Correct? Not, not that I'm aware of. In fact, Jerry Corsi was never indicted by special counsel Robert Mueller, correct? Correct. But you were, correct? Objection to form. Not answering that question. So I guess I'm not the single worst lawyer in America, am I? Objection That's to form. That's an opinion. That, that calls for an opinion. You're also talking to Alex Jones at this time, are you not? And, and Aaron's, Alex Jones and his sidekick, Aaron Stroyer, S-T-R-O-Y-E-R. Touch in a form. Correct? You're on, the t on uh, InfoWars with them. In this time frame, I would think so, yes. Yeah, so you're actually in intending to damage my reputation with, with uh, Alex Jones. Your, and, your interpretation, and, not mine. And Aaron Stroyer as well. Owen, I think his name is Owen to begin Owen, with. okay. Uh, that's your interpretation, not mine. You, you are aware that I was a, a guest frequently on InfoWars? No, actually I wasn't. You're aware that I went on Joel Gilbert's show on InfoWars? Yes, I did know that. You're aware that Joel Gilbert uh, had a show on InfoWars? No, I, uh, that's not my understanding. He occasionally, on Fridays, people, various people would sit in for Jones, who often took Fridays off. And in fact, uh, on at least one occasion, Joel Gilbert emailed you and said, you know Larry Clayton is going to be on my show today? Checks in a form. I don't recall that. You're aware there's an email to that effect, are you not? There may be, but I don't recall and that. And you didn't produce that to me, did you? Checks in a form. Uh, I don't know that there is or that there isn't. Your lawyer pulled it out of the stack that you gave him? Objection to form. And why would he know that? So That's the point, is that he didn't control the, the document production, so he claims. You don't know what was pulled out of anything you gave to your lawyer. That assumes you. facts. Nothing was pulled. Go ahead. Ask a question. That doesn't assume facts, not in evidence, please. At 201, you say, Defendant Stone, you, you called me a piece of garbage, correct? Uh, if this is an accurate transcript, yes. Constitutionally protected free speech. You make it a, a practice of calling people pieces of garbage? When they are. Who else have you called pieces of garbage? Nobody I can think of. 
Robert Mueller? Objection. We're not talking about Robert Aaron Mueller. Aaron Zelinsky? Not talking about them. Next. The other prosecutors you called them garbage too? Next. At 411, for those people out there who think that Larry Clayman's IQ is higher than 70, you're wrong. You my said that, right? Yes, if, if this is an accurate transcript. Yeah. Again, my opinion. Now, that's, that's a factual statement, is it not, that I don't have an IQ higher than 70? It's an opinion. Yeah. Someone who has an IQ of 70 or less is essentially retarded, correct? It's an opinion. Okay. Uh, you were saying that I was retarded. Yeah, I didn't say that. I don't see that word here. You were saying that I uh, am someone who doesn't have the mental capacity to to basically do much of anything. Correct? I don't. I don't see those words here. No. But that's what less than seventy means. That's your. That's your opinion. You, you know what IQ means, correct? I'm familiar with it. Yeah. And what does it mean to you? Intelligence. It's actually a scientific. Uh, Objection of intelligence. Are, are, you're not the witness today. So what well, he knows. He's an adverse witness. I can ask him leading questions. <laughs> ask him a question. Don't say, don't you know this, and state it. State I can say it any mean. which way I want, Mr. Bouchel. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Ask What's Bouchel. your question? Yes, you're, you're aware that an IQ test is a scientific determination of one's intelligence. Generally speaking, yes. Okay. So therefore, you were stating a fact that I had a IQ of... Was stating an opinion. I mean, an stating IQ an opinion. Less than 70. Is it stating an opinion. And Sorry fact, you're so sensitive. And in fact, when you say less than 70, you could mean it go all the way down to, to zero or one, correct? Nothing would surprise me. Paragraph 59. On March 22, 2017, YouTube video published in this circuit contained false misleading, I'm just reading the paragraph, and defamatory statements concerning me, meaning Larry Clayman. This was my affidavit that we're reading from. These false and defamatory statements include but are not limited to, and these are your statements, at, at 45 of the hour in the YouTube video, you stated, now comes gadfly right-wing lawyer Larry Clayman to say that Alex Jones and Infowars have violated the law in their release of classified documents and would be prosecuted. You made that statement, did you not? Uh, if this is a true uh, uh statement of what was said on the uh, on the internet on the uh, video yes on the other hand I don't recall specifically what that refers to context Excuse you, me, Mr. Clayman. yes I didn't put my, my yes. thing on. are you able to get my sound in here? yes I got it thank you <clears throat> thank you you were referring to whether or not uh, Alex Jones and Infowars had classified information from a whistleblower about national security um, matters, correct? Checks I don't form. recall. And it was dealing with alleged mass illegal and unconstitutional surveillance on the American people by the Obama NSA, CIA, and FBI, correct? Uh, I don't recall. So you just pulled this out of a hat? Well, it was it said in the context of the time, but I don't remember the specific interview. I'd have to see the entire interview to understand the context. You are aware that at the time I had represented someone by the name of Dennis Montgomery, correct? No, I don't think I was. Montgomery was an alleged whistleblower who left as a contractor of the NSA, CIA and FBI, allegedly with 47 hard drives and over six million page, 600 million pages of information, some of which was claimed to be classified, correct? Object objection to form. Is that a question? Yes. No, I'm unaware of that. You're aware that I got two immunity agreements for Montgomery so he could come forward with that information and be interviewed by the FBI? Objection no, I'm unaware form. of that. You actually proposed, you know who Mike Zullo is? Yes. Yes, who's Mike Zullo? Uh, I think he used to work for Joe Arpaio. Right. And 
Sheriff Arpaio is my client, correct? You're aware of that? Not aware of that. Okay. That hasn't been widely reported either? I don't know whether it's been widely reported or not, but I was unaware of it. You don't think Arpaio would hire somebody with an IQ less than 70, do you? Your calls for an opinion. Are you saying that Sheriff Arpaio has an IQ less than 70? I have a high regard for Sheriff Arpaio. And he's an intelligent man, correct? Yes, he is. Okay. Now, at the time, you had pro proposed to Mike Zullo that you could get Montgomery a meeting in the White House with President Trump, correct? I have no memory of that whatsoever. I don't think I've ever spoken to Mike Zullo. Uh, you also proposed that to Dr. Jerome Corsi, correct? I have no memory of that whatsoever. You are aware that Dr. Corsi had worked with Mike Zullo on the issue of whether or not President Obama's birth certificate was authentic or not. I had read that, yes. And you had been in communication with uh, Corsi and Zullo in that regard. I have no memory of that. You believe that that birth certificate was not authentic, correct? Uh, I form. didn't have an opinion at the time. I don't think I, what, what year are we talking? Ever. Well, but I didn't think, let's go back. I don't recall any such conversation. You said President Trump in the White House. I don't recall any such conversation. That would or be you would, post you would put Montgomery in touch with individuals in the Trump White House. I never recall saying any such thing. You were stating at the time that President Trump had been illegally surveilled by the intelligence agencies and the FBI in and around the time of this published statement on March 22, okay. 2017. I don't recall that. And you wanted to put this whistleblower in touch with either President Trump or people in the White House because he had come forward and said that he had knowledge from his time as a contractor for the NSA, CIA, and FBI that those agencies were surveilling President Trump unconstitutionally. Uh, objection. I have no such memory. Again, you're aware that forgetting things when you remember is also perjury. Uh, let's let's but I, object. My answer is uh, the same. Objection of form. You've been in contact with Montgomery, have you not? I don't believe so. I'm going to be getting your telephone records. Help yourself. Now, that, will that convince you to tell me whether or not you've been in contact with him? I don't to believe I have this ever. This is ar argumentative. I don't believe I've ever spoken to Dennis Montgomery. Have you spoken with anyone on his behalf? I have not. Michael Zullo? Never, I don't believe I've ever spoken to Michael Zullo, as I said previously. Jerry Corsi? Not in regard to Dennis Montgomery, not that I recall. With regard to illegal mass surveillance, which included the president? Trump. I remember reading a story, I think it was on InfoWars, uh, regarding this program. Uh, and to the extent hmm. that I have any knowledge of it, it would have come from that. You've never, ever uh, made any statements that the president was illegally surveilled? Oh, I believe he was, but we're talking about much later. And you, of course, had an interest in finding out whether or not he was illegally surveilled. I would think every American citizen would have an interest okay, in you, that. You style yourself as a close confidant and friend of President Trump, correct? I'm certainly a friend of his. Okay, in fact, just yesterday he suggested you shouldn't be sentenced to uh, what the Department no, of Justice let's, recommended. Let's not, we're not talking about that. Okay, but you're, you're close enough that he can do something like I'm that. Not, we're not talking about that. We're not, ask questions about your lawsuit, sir. <coughs> this is me, about my sir. lawsuit. Uh, can I ask uh, you to put your mic on? Higher? Sure. Sure. He's told you he's a friend of Donald Trump. That's what you get. Let's I, I don't, I don't want your testimony, Michelle, please. I don't need your testimony. I don't want it. Maybe at some point we'll have it, but not now. What you're referring to was a concern that you perceived that I had, that Alec Jones <clears throat> and Infowar somehow had access to classified information that was provided <clears throat> allegedly 
in a court case in Arizona concerning Sh Sheriff Joe Arpaio with regard to alleged profiling of Latinos in Maricopa County, correct? Uh, objection. The, the no foundation. These assume facts, not in evidence. You got it. I, I am entitled to ask my questions. I'm entitled to even ask leading questions. So please don't interrupt, Mr. Bichel, or I'm not saying I'll move to leading. have you sanctioned. Okay? I'm not. I'm not saying it's leading. I'm saying your 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 questions are assuming many facts. Yeah, I, I am. Evidence. I am. He, I will say it again. Can you read back the question, Madam sure. Clerk? What you were referring to was a concern that you perceived that I had, that Alex Jones in Infowar someone ha somehow had access to classified information that was allegedly in a court case in Arizona concerning Sheriff Joe Arpaio with regards to alleged um, profiling of Latinos in, in the, with the county. Maricopa County. Maricopa County. That's okay. your assertion. I have no such memory. You are aware that Sheriff Arpaio uh, was found liable for a misdemeanor for alleged profiling and violation of the court order. I was aware of that. And you're aware that Dennis Montgomery entered into that case in terms of some of the information which the judge, Murray Snow, had obtained. Was that aware of that? You're aware that Dennis Montgomery actually was working with the cold case posse of Mike Zullo investigating uh, illegal surveillance in Arizona. Objection uh, I was not aware of that. You're aware that, that that was an issue in that case? Objection I was not aware of that. At 1 o'clock, <clears throat> you also published, <clears throat> quote, to be clear, Larry Klayman is a moron. He has never won a case in court in his life. He may have won a few motions. He is a lightweight. He is a know-nothing. Now, to be able to make the statement that I never won a case in court, you had to look back into my record as a lawyer, correct? Well, that's the impression I had. Okay. I believed that to be sure at the time I so said So you it. basically showed a reckless disregard for the truth at a minimum. Are you, are you not disputing the other things I said? I'm getting to that. Constitutionally protected so, free speech. So, you know, you then stated he may have won a few motions. That's what I believed right. at the time. So, to do that, you would have to go back into my background to find out whether or not I had won a few motions, correct? Um, it was just an impression that I had. Okay. And where did you get that impression? Don't recall. Okay. So, your concept of constitutionally protected free speech is that you can say anything you want about anyone without consequence. Objection to form. That's your view. Uh, you're a public figure. Worse has been said about you. Because you, Roger Stone, specialize in attacking people publicly. That's part of what you do. That's not a question. Object. That's a personal attack. Yeah. Uh, it's not a personal attack to say I've never won a court case in my life? Uh, that was my impression at the time. It's I not believed a, it at the time I said it. It's not a personal attack to say that my IQ is less than 70? It was my, a, that was my opinion at the time. A moron and a retard? I didn't, those words are not there. Okay, moron's here though, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is indeed. Okay. That's a, per, that's a constitutionally protected opinion. You've done research on, on what is defamation or not? Uh, I, I have not entitled to an opinion. Well, you've done research and you know what constitutes defamation, correct? Section uh, form. No, I'm not an attorney. So you have no clue as to what defamation entails? <laughs> I know I'm entitled to my opinion. And because you have no clue, that means you can say anything Ob you want about anyone Objection without consequence, form. correct? Uh, I'm not an attorney, I couldn't say. You know, if I was you talking about me, I would ask you if your IQ is less than 70. Uh, object. Wh uh, what is your IQ? What's the, what's the argument? I'm not answering the questions. Those aren't questions. Those are attacks. Do you know what your IQ is? What is it? Couldn't tell you. Don't has, know. Have you ever been tested for that? Not that I'm aware of. You, 
<coughs> turn to the next page, which is 12. You have had a contact. You're, you're aware that I represent Clive and Bundy, correct? Uh, I became aware of that, yes. How did you become aware of that? Uh, because I spoke uh, at a rally in Nevada uh, in favor of a pardon for Mr. Bundy and others who got caught up in that mm. action by the federal government. And who did you speak to about that pardon? Um, I think I sent a letter to the president. You spoke to Deborah Jordan, the person who works with and apparently is the girlfriend for Pete Santilli? I don't recall ever discussing that with her. Uh, she's the one that invited you to Nevada, correct, to speak? No, actually I don't think so. I think Dean Ryan was the person who invited me to Nevada. Who's Dean Ryan? An activist out there. Okay. Uh, have you spoken to anyone about that pardon with the Bundy family? Um, Mrs. Bundy, Clevin's wife, I guess, was at the event, yes. And, and what, if anything, did you say to her? I said I thought her husband deserved a pardon. Did you say you were trying to get a pardon for him? I told him that I would write the president, yeah. And you did? I believe I did. And you have a copy of that letter today? Um, today? No, not No, you have a copy of that in your possession, custody, um, or control? I honestly don't know. Did you give that to Mr. Bouchel? Uh, I did not, but I don't see the relevance. Now, at the time that you met with Mrs. Bundy and others in Nevada, you were aware that I represented Clive and Bundy. No, actually, I wasn't. I became aware afterwards. If you're asking, in, if you're asking uh, whether your name came up, I don't recall it coming in up. In fact, in fact, your the basis upon which you offered that pardon was to help yourself make money, correct? Absolutely not. I was paid nothing for my appearance you were, there. You were attempting to trade off your relationship with President Donald I would, Trump. I received nothing for that event. I did that because I think these people were wronged. You are aware that I told Carol Bundy not to have anything to do with you? I'm unaware of that. Because I believe that you're unethical? You're aware of that? that that's a, that's uh, argumentative. That's a personal attack. Well, are you, are you, are you, along, are you aware? Along with Defendant Stone has tried to trade off my clients like a scavenger. There's, def there's de defamation for you. I asked nothing of the Bundys, nothing. It's not even expenses. So this was nothing. to boost your reputation so you could it was make try, money, it was, No, it was to try to help right a wrong. Because money what's ma is what primarily matters to you. Uh, that's conjecture on your part, some kind of veiled insult, I guess. Okay. Well, you just said that was the case when, when you represented me. Uh, no, that's not what I said at all. I said you needed the resources to try to communicate a message. And those resources will go to pay you and your staff, correct? Uh, partially, but mm -hmm. I generally believe that overhead in a campaign should be at less than 20% of the budget. And would, would pay your friend, uh, Tony Fabrizio, the, the pollster? Uh, any campaign that's a serious statewide campaign needs a benchmark poll, which cannot be had for $10,000. You were making a percentage off of what Fabrizio was, was charging the campaign. Correct? I have no such memory whatsoever. Do you have some evidence of that? Uh, you're a friend of Tucker Carlson, aren't you? I am. And Daily Caller. I am. And you know Chuck Ross, a reporter of the Daily Caller, correct? I do. And you've talked to him? Uh, not recently, but prior to the gag order, yes. Yeah. And you used Tucker Carlson to make statements uh, favorable to you during the time period that you were under a gag order and still are under a gag Ob order. Objection. We're not answering. With Judge these. Jackson in, in Washington. Okay, we're not, we're not answering the, these questions. So, next. Has nothing to do with your lawsuit. Next. In fact, you used. Chuck Ross, a daily caller, to make negative statements about Jerry Corsi and his involvement with a doctor in Florida, correct? Say that again? Repeat Can you read the question? It back. Sure. In fact, you used Chuck Ross, a daily caller, to make negative statements about Jerry Corsi with his involvement with a doctor in Florida, correct? The doctor, you're saying? He knows what I'm talking about. We'll get to it more specifically. Okay. I don't, I don't recall one. any such conversation. You planted a story with Chuck Ross 
to try to harm Dr. Corsi. You have no evidence of that whatsoever because it's not true. Well, we'll be deposing Chuck Ross. Good, help yourself. And Tucker Carlson. Have fun. I don't think either one tells either one of those guys what to say or write. I certainly haven't. But you have had contact with them about various matters. Prior right? to the gag order, yes. And during the gag order. Judge. No. In fact, the evening before, we're not, we're you, before you were convicted, you had discussions with Tucker Carlson, correct? We're, we're, not, we're not talking about any of that. Next question. Certified. You are aware that in 2018, I told Alex Jones and his producers on InfoWars that I did not want to appear on any show which included Defendant Stone or had ties to Defendant Stone, either as a guest or as a host, because I strongly felt at the time that Mueller may indict Defendant Stone. <coughs> Defendant Stone was at the time a host on InfoWars. That's a correct statement, is it not? I, Objection have, to form. I have no knowledge of that. Alex didn't tell you that I wouldn't go on a show with you? He did not. Are you aware that the National Enquirer, I also told them that I don't want to appear in any article where you were mentioned? That's uh, paragraph 64. Yes, I just read it. Uh, unfamiliar with that. Persons at the National Enquirer told you that, correct? I have no memory of that. Now, you, have a re you had a relationship with the National Enquirer, didn't you? Uh, I knew one woman reporter in New York who worked for the National Enquirer. In fact, you've written stories for the National Enquirer, um, right? I think I wrote a sidebar on the JFK assassination, yeah. That's it? I don't, there may be others, I just don't recall. Paragraph 66, you're aware of this as well, are you not? I also warned Alex Jones not to release any information that was potentially under seal in the contempt case of Melendrez versus Arpaio, 07-CV-02513, District of Arizona, 2007, which he may have improperly obtained from defendant Stone or others concerning Dennis Montgomery, another whistleblower client of mine who contracted with the U.S. government so it, could, so it could use his software capabilities for intelligence gathering. That refreshes uh, your recollection. Uh, Checks in a form and foundation. I have no memory of that. You are also aware that I warned my client, Dennis Montgomery, to stay away from you. No memory of that. I have no knowledge of that, I should say. Paragraph 69, Stone wanted to and did intimidate and threaten my client, Dr. Corsi, since he is a material witness in the Mueller investigation as Defendant Stone obviously feared that he would testify against him to Mueller. Defendant Stone feared me as Dr. Corsi's lawyer as he knew that I know what type of person he is and must have thought falsely that my representation of Dr. Corsi was my revenge for him having harmed me during my U.S. Senate campaign. That's an accurate statement, isn't yeah. it? Uh, we're not, we're not yeah. we denied it in the complaint and we're not talking about it, but there, it assumes you denied more it. facts. In the he end. didn't sign the complaint. He, I, I can ask that question. He, he was? Didn't, he, didn't, he didn't sign your answer. I can ask that, the question. That would, be all, yeah, that would all be conjecture on your part. That was, in fact, the motive to attack me and Corsi. Uh, you feared uh, us both, correct? Object. We're not talking about Don't your motives that. regarding the indictment well, or anything. Well, gi given that I'm a know-nothing, a moron, have IQ less than 70, never won a case, why even bother mentioning me on InfoWars? Don't recall. Just something that you had an epiphany at the time that you had to attack Larry Klayman and Dr. Jerry Corsi? If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. What, do you attack people that have no relevance to anything? Is that your, your modus operandi? Uh, objection to form. Not answering that question. Do you have any questions that pertain to your lawsuit? It does pertain to my lawsuit. In fact, the affidavit was submitted in furtherance of the lawsuit.
paragraph 72, where I state, this vindictive malicious retaliation by defendant Stone had a logical purpose. He tried to intimidate and threaten Dr. Corsi and me in order for us not to collaborate with Mueller. We obviously did not collaborate with Mueller, but defendant Stone is both unstable and unhinged. CCDs containing videos of defamatory statements and publications, and apparently paranoid, and he tried to prevent collaboration at all costs in order to save his own skin. His conduct towards us is similar to his conduct toward Material Witness 2 in the Mueller investigation, Randy Credico, who he allegedly threatened mafioso style, in quotes, to kill. He even allegedly threatened to kill Credico's service dog, for which he was in part indicted. That, in fact, is your motive, is it not, for attacking uh, Dr. Corson? I'm not, I mean, even, I'm not I object any of that. I don't, it, it assumes facts, not in evidence, and it and it's a, doesn't even make sense. Ask your next question, please. Certified. Also, Madam Court Reporter, at the, at the front, list all the certified questions. And, and the questions where there was, where he was instructed not to answer, even if I didn't say certified. Thank you. You are aware that uh, Judicial Watch filed a complaint Strike that, I'll start over again. You are aware that Judicial Watch filed a complaint under the Freedom of Information Act, a court complaint and before that a FOIA request to obtain documents about the raid on your house where you were arrested on January 25th, 2019. We're, we're not going to discuss the arrest, indictment, any You are aware that they filed a complaint to get the documents from the government, the FBI, if the Justice aware, Department. If you're aware. Uh, yes, I read that. Yes. And you've had discussions with people at Judicial Watch about that. I've never spoken to anybody. In fact, at you've Watch. contacted them to find out what documents, if any, they've gotten. I've never had any communications with anyone at Judicial Watch other than the one I've described previously. And during that discussion that you now remember, uh, you discussed with Fitton the raid on your house. No, I didn't. That did not come up. Did Fitton re uh, expressed sympathy for the raid on your house. I don't recall that. I think our conversation was more casual than that. What was your conversation? Hey, how you doing? You do a great job. Thank you very much. I think that was kind of it. We passed each other in the hallway. Okay. Uh, there is no other communication. I don't know Tom Fitt. Now, um, you're not in any way interested in what documents, if any, Judicial Watch got from the FBI, the Justice Department, and any others involved in the raid on your house on January 25th, 2019? I don't recall that they got any. I thought I read that uh, that the FBI turned over nothing and they subsequently filed a suit. Who's been contacting with Judicial Watch in that regard on your behalf? No one. Are you saying you have no cell phone records or exactly. emails? Exactly what I'm saying. Is that what you're saying? Exactly what okay. I'm saying. So you're saying that when I get your telephone records, they're not going to show anything they like will, that? They most certainly will not. And you're your emails will not show any Most certainly like that? will not. Because you've erased all of this, haven't you? Objection, a form. It assumes facts not in evidence. Absolutely it's untrue. Argumentative. Uh, before your deposition today, you're aware that lawyers for Judicial Watch were in contact with your lawyers today? You're aware they've talked? I don't know that they have talked. Have you talked with lawyers for Judicial Watch? Uh, I'm not a witness today. Ask your next right, question. Well, that'll come some other day. You're aware that I have a defamation judgment against Judicial Watch that was obtained in the Southern District of Florida on June 4th. June 11, 2014. Turn to page 28. I think it's after this. That's it. Right there. No, I'm unaware of this. Turn to.
page 32 of my affidavit, which is Exhibit 2 to this deposition, Larry Clayman versus everyone. This is after the clippings? This is 30, 32. Look at the bottom. Clayman production, 32. It's called a Bates number. At the very bottom. Oh, is this it? No, no, 32, what are you saying? 32? Mm hmm 57. 49. How long I'm getting there. Yes. Page 32. I don't think you're on 32. Oh, 32. I'm sorry. 37. This does not have a marking on it. There it is. That's it. <clears throat> you make it a, a practice to read the Washington Post as part of your, your work? No, I actually don't because they're behind a paywall and I refuse to pay for them. So I rarely read the Washington Post. But in fact, their articles are published uh, publicly without being behind a paywall. Well, much pay later, it. they usually... A few days pay. later. Yes, but so I rarely... read those. I rarely read them. Uh, you get on Google prompts about various articles involving politics and law and things like that. Yeah, that would be true. Yeah, and you read it off your phone. Usually. And you're aware that the Washington Post published the story Larry Clayman versus everyone in their weekend edition uh, back in 2014, which is pages 32 through 36 of Exhibit 2 to this deposition, my uh, affidavit. I'm unaware of that, and I've never seen this article. Take your time and look at it. Never seen it previously. I was unaware of it. Okay. Turn to page 37. Yep. This is a, a biography that's on Freedom Watch's website. Uh, you've seen that before, haven't you? No, I can't say I have. You, you've gone to Freedom Watch's website, have you not? I think I get blast solicitations from you. I don't know if I've ever gone to the website. Uh, you are aware that I graduated from Duke University? Not aware of that. You're not aware that uh, I went to Emory Law School? Not aware of that. You, you, in the course of representing me in my Senate campaign, you would not have come to know that? I may have then, but I don't recall it today. In fact, now that I read it, I'll take your word for it. I assume you wrote this, um, but I don't, didn't recall it. No. In, in fact, uh, when you were <clears throat> working with me on the Senate campaign, you actually created a website for my candidacy, which had my bi biography on it, correct? That's true, but I haven't memorized your biography. Okay. Um, you have screenshots of that uh, website and biography? No. During my Senate campaign? I don't believe so. Why would I? In fact, you wrote the biography that was on the Senate website, uh, correct? I don't recall that. It's certainly possible. And to do that, you would have had to know about my background, correct? Uh, or taking it from something that you had written. You're aware that I've sued Tom Fitton for defamation over the statement that I was ousted from Judicial Watch because of a sexual harassment complaint? I'm unaware of that. Just ask Tom Fitton. Objection to form.
turn to <clears throat> what I'll ask to be marked as Exhibit 3. It's already Exhibit 2, no? Well, it's Exhibit 3 to deposition. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Um, you're right, it is Exhibit 2 to deposition. So turn to page 60. At the top. At the bottom, 60. Yes. Can I ask what is it within the affidavit that is? Well, it's on page 60 of the affidavit, which is exhibit two to this deposition. Right, but isn't it, it, it itself is an exhibit to your affidavit, right? Does it have a exhibit number? Exhibit E. Exhibit E. Thank you. Let me just double check. And it's Bates page 60. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let me just check. Page 60 of Exhibit E <coughs> to Exhibit 2 of this deposition is a complaint uh, filed by Dr. Jerome Corsi versus Hugh Roger Stone, Newsmax Media Inc., Christopher Ruddy, Cassandra Fairbanks, John Cardillo, and John Bachman as defendants. You see that? Yes, I do. Okay. Now, you know Christopher Ruddy, correct? Yes, I do. You know Cassandra Fairbanks, correct? Yes, I do. You know John Cardillo? Yes, correct? I do. You know John Bachman? Yes, I do. Correct. Uh, now, how did you come to know Christopher Ruddy? Uh, let's see, I've known him a long time. Uh, I guess I met him probably in sometime around 2010, 2012. He is uh, from New York. Uh, I think it was around the time that Donald Trump was talking about running for president in 2012, maybe been a little before that. Um, but I've known him for a while. Did you meet him during the time that he was investigating the death of Vince Foster? Or did you ever talk I to him during did, that time? I did, did not know him at that time. You're aware that he investigated He wrote an death? excellent book. I've read it. Okay. And you are aware that he is the one who founded Newsmax? Yes. And what is Newsmax? Newsmax is a uh, news organization that is both on cable television and digital I think on radio, although I'm uncertain about that. And it pur purports to reach about 80 million households in the United States? I've heard that or read it. Okay. And Ruddy's the founder, correct? That's my understanding. And he's the CEO? I don't know his title, but I right. believe he's the own. I think he's the sole owner, and I think he's the founder. Now, Ruddy uh, purports to be a close friend of President Trump. Is that accurate? Objection. I, uh, I, I don't know whether he purports that at all. I as think he's a friend of President Trump. Has the president ever told you that Ruddy's a friend? I don't recall him specifically saying that. And do you recall any inkling as to whether or not the president has ever made reference to Christopher Ruddy? Mm. I mean, I, I, I have been in both their presence, so I know they are friends, but not since he's been elected president. You don't know that Ruddy's a close friend? Uh, I wouldn't be in a position to know that. Okay. Uh, it is your impression that Ruddy tries to trade off of the fact that he's a close friend of the president? I've never said anything before. of the kind. You haven't seen articles about that in, in the media? Uh, I've seen articles describing them as friends, but I believe that to be accurate. Okay, but not close friends. Uh, again, I'm not, not in a position to know how close they are. 
Uh, John Cardillo, who is he? C-A-R-D-I-L-L-O. He is a commentator on Newsmax. How long has he been a commentator on Newsmax? Could not tell you. More than a year? I really, I, I honestly don't know. Cardillo is your friend, correct? He is a friend of mine. How did you get to know Cardillo? Um, I think we were introduced by, uh, hmm, good question. I think we were introduced by a mutual friend, although I don't recall who. I've only known him for a couple of years. I was, a fi I was familiar with his work just from seeing things he'd written or just watching him online, but I have not known him that long. A couple of years, two, three years perhaps. Other than being a commentator on Newsmax, what if anything does he do professionally? I do not know. He's a lobbyist, is he not? Not that I'm aware of. You've worked with Cardillo doing lobbying? I've never worked with Cardillo doing lobbying. If he's a lobbyist, I'm unaware of it. Okay. Uh, Cassandra Fairbanks. Yes. You know her, correct? I do. How did you come to know her? Uh, she was introduced to me by Jack Posobiec. How's that spelled? P-O-S-O-B-I-E-C. Who's Jack Posobiec? He is a commentator for OAN, Online American News. And what was the context that Mr. Posobiec introduced you to? They are friends. They are friends. I think she was, I forget where she was working at the time. She was not at the, at the Gateway Pundit. I don't recall where she was working. Just they're, they're close friends, so that we were introduced. Sometime during the Trump campaign, I think. Where were you introduced? Don't recall. In New York? No, definitely not. Where does she reside? Don't know. Uh, you're aware that she claims to have a close relationship with Julian Assange, A-S-S-A-N-G-E. I, I have read that. You're aware that she claims to have visited Julian Assange? I have read that. You're aware that she knows Dr. Jerome Corsi? Uh, I understand she was on television with him, but I don't know what the extent of their relationship When is. was she on television with him? Couldn't tell you. Sometime in the last year. You have spoken with Cassandra Fairbanks, have you not? I have spoken to her, certainly. And you've spoken to her about Dr. Corsi? Name never came up. And you've spoken to Cassandra Fairbanks about me? I've never, name has never come up that I recall. You've spoken to Christopher Ruddy about me, have you not? Um, uh, we had one exchange, I believe, about the ridiculousness of one of your lawsuits. But beyond that, n no, not really. When did the, was it this lawsuit that was discussed? No. What other lawsuit was discussed? This is, the, this is the one, the tortious interference lawsuit, I believe. I was unaware that you had a contract with them. Christopher Ruddy called you? No. You had a discussion in person at Newsmax no, headquarters? No, no. What was the context? And I think we I, th I believe we turned that communication over. I told him that you had filed a lawsuit, and I believe he was, he responded, "But you've never. I don't recall you ever discussing this with me." And I said, "I didn't, because I didn't." Well, if the case was against Newsmax, well, strike that. It wasn't against you at the time. It was just against Newsmax, right? No, I think I'd just been served. I'd just been served at some event. You are aware that there's a separate suit just against Newsmax, correct? Uh, I just became aware of that today. Uh, you attempted to evade service of process on the cases that were most certainly did, on you. Most certainly did not. In fact, I had to have you served at a strip club, did I not? Uh, you attempted to have me served at a strip club, but I don't think you were successful. But I've accepted service at home. Uh, and in public events for all of your suits. Now, the conversation that you had with Ruddy, tell us what was said. Never had a conversation with him. We had an exchange, which you have a copy of. Now, in the course of the last two years, you have gone over to Newsmax's headquarters in Boca Raton. Rarely, but occasionally. Before that, Palm Beach, right? To, rarely, to do appearances. But, rarely, but occasionally. During that time period, you have seen Christopher Ruddy. Yes, sometimes. He's not always there. And you had conversations with him, correct? Certainly, if I was there, I had a conversation with him. Right. And you discussed the Mueller investigation with him? No. He declined to discuss that other than saying he wished me well. So what did you discuss with him? 
I, I don't recall any specific discussion. Generally, how are you doing? I'm fine. Nothing significant. He's been a friend of well, some longstanding. What, what, regardless of being significant, what did you discuss? I don't recall. Have you ever uh, asked Christopher Wrighty to make you a paid contributor to Newsmax? I have not. Uh, you have discussed Larry Clayman with Christopher Wright. I have never discussed Larry Clayman. You with have him. discussed Dr. Corsi. I never discussed Jerry Corsi with Dr. with uh, Christopher Wrighty. Did Christopher Wrighty tell you that I put him on notice and John Cardillo and John Bachman to retain any and all communications with you in writing or otherwise? No, I'm not aware of that. He has declined to discuss any of these lawsuits with me in any way, saying he would only speak through his attorneys. You're aware that destroying evidence that is relevant to a lawsuit or which may lead to relevant evidence can constitute obstruction of justice? Uh, you know, uh, argumentative. We, we understand the oath. Next question. Has Ruddy ever discussed with you the documentation he has on communications with you concerning Larry Clayman and or Jerry Corsi? No. As have Corsi's lawyers communicated with your lawyers over the lawsuits against you and Newsmax and Ruddy and Fairbanks, Cardillo and Bachman? Not that I'm aware of, but I don't know. Who's John Bachman? Uh, he's the one I know the least on this list. He is a talking head at, uh, you know, an analyst at uh, Newsmax. Have you ever appeared on his show? Uh, one time. When was that? Don't recall the exact date. And what was the subject? Um, don't recall the subject. Have you ever appeared on Cardillo's show? Yes. And what were the subjects discussed then and when? Uh, fairly recently uh, regarding um, the Democratic primaries and the Democratic contest for, for president and impeachment, subjects that I'm allowed to speak about. You have appeared on Cardillo's show in the past and talked about special counsel Robert Mueller? Don't recall whether I had, but if so, it would have been prior to the gag order, obviously. Uh, it has been alleged that you violated the gag order on a number of occasions, We're, correct? we're not talking about any yeah, gag order. Yeah, discuss order. that. I'm just asking whether it's alleged, not whether you did it. You know it's alleged because they're court records, so. Right. Excuse me, Mr. Clayton. I have to yeah, go ahead. Let's, uh, let's take a break.